why does treatment failure occur after chemo and or radiation therapy? So one of the causes of AML is exposure to toxins, to various toxins that could be, and often they, these toxins are chemotherapy agents. So that's the one thing. Other toxins that one always have to think about is exposure to, to petrochemical type agents. Uh, uh, that, and, and then finally, patients who've had radiation treatment for some other malignancy also are at increased risk of developing AML. And often the AML may be preceded by the occurrence of myelodysplastic type disorder, myelodysplastic syndrome. It's important that anyone who is receiving chemotherapy or radiation type treatments are followed long term, especially with blood counts. You know, just the standard having a complete blood count on a yearly basis, for instance, um, it, it should be done, especially in, in patients who've had prior exposure to these chemotherapies and or radiation therapy. So, so that's the, the one thing. Now, if a patient is on treatment uh, for their leukemia and they're still getting exposed to some toxic agent, for instance, that may hasten the problem and, and, and cause a relapse of the disease or even make them more resistant to, to, to the initial therapy. So th these are important factors that we will always look and ask about when a patient presents with either myelodysplastic syndrome or acute leukemia. And one should know that uh, and about 30% of patients who develop a myelodysplastic syndrome will have transformation of the myelodysplastic syndrome to acute myeloid leukemias. So important uh, point. Um, so the, the question comes up then about residual disease. So uh, in, in, um, in these patients, so it's important when one treats a patient and we think they have achieved a remission to look for residual disease. And you mentioned doing the bone marrow, highly important in acute myeloid leukemia, um, but difficult for a patient to undergo a repeated bone marrows, but this is the way we follow patients uh, in the, in, from the clinical perspective. So, um, and we look, the pathologist will look at the bone marrow and, and count how many blast cells there are that represent the acute leukemia. But at the same time, when the bone marrow is done, a sample is usually collected for flow cytometry, um, which is another way of looking at what if, and, and finding if there are any residual leukemic cells. It's more sensitive than sometimes in a, looking at down a, a microscope at the cells on, uh, on the slides. So the, we would send for flow cytometry to, to look for residual disease markers that represent underlying leukemia still present, but less than 5%. 